Okay. Beautiful. Hello, hello, hello. This is Debbie Dashinger and welcome to Dare to Dream. It is a pleasure to be here with you. And I've got a special guest coming on in a little bit, and that is Alexander Quinn, who's going to talk about ascension and the great planetary situation going on because it's a shift. Alexander is a star seed navigating the light. He's also a YouTuber, and I'm sure my number is old, even from early this week, but at least 50,000 followers and growing. Excited to have that conversation with him. This show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award. It is listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. And it also won the Coalition for Visionary Resources Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show. And it is listed in Apple Podcast as one of the top self-improvement podcast. If you're listening to the show on radio or podcast, you'd like to see what I look like, my guest looks like, and all the dynamics that take place, go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Join us there. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work. If you'd like to be a facilitator or take a class anywhere in the world, go to Dr. Dane here, H-E-E-R.com or accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I'm a media visibility expert. I'm a book writing coach, and I show you how to write a dynamic page turner book, and I help take you from inception of your idea to self-publish and complete successfully. I've also got a company that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller status, and I do all the heavy lifting for the author. And last, I show spiritual messengers how to be interviewed on radio and podcast, and get massive results. If you're ready to capitalize on those skills for who you be and what you do, I've got a free gift for you. It's templates, it's videos, it's all the how-tos, so you can break into this being seen and heard through books and interviews right away. Go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I. D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. Today, I'm speaking with Alexander Quinn. Alexander awoke in a Nashville hospital after a serious accident in 2011, which triggered a vast spiritual awakening. Post-recovery, Alex was led to a series of ET experiences and a significant spiritual odyssey began. It involved his psychic abilities, as well as understanding what his earth incarnation signifies at this time of the great planetary shift. Alexander also discovered he had emotional connections beyond the physical nature of his earth family and began to explore and nurture those galactic connections. As a result of these unique points of connection, he now specializes in the starseed ascension phenomenon and published his book with Ozark Publishing in late 2022. You can learn more about him, go to YouTube and look up Alexander Quinn to see his videos and enjoy what he does out in the world. And with that, I invite the amazing Alexander on Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you here. It's so great to be here. That was a, a fabulous intro, and uh, I, 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 I absolutely loved it. I absolutely loved it. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, hearing hearing the, my bio back, but when, when I'm listening to it, I'm thinking, my God, is that, is that really me? Did I go through all that? But uh, to, you know, time goes through pretty quick, but um, yeah, it's it's a it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a I I totally get it. I totally get hearing your own bio back, and it's like wow, what a journey. Cool, this is who I am right now, and that's why. So that's part of where I want to start because I I'm so curious your before and after. You have this big accident. Something happens that completely changes you. You start discovering you've got connections beyond this planet, which we all do. But still, if you're coming from one way of being, and that is a wide awakening, and then having interactions with, so who were you before? What is the difference between who you are now and who you were pre-accident? I think, I think what sets me aside pretty much from everyone in the spiritual community, all the stars, all of them, is that 
um, a lot of people that I, from my understanding, they were all kind of spiritual people before, where I was not. I was the total opposite of spiritual. I was living a, a lifestyle that was total opposite of, of spiritual. Um, even the, the, you know, my friends, what I was doing, you know, I was working in the music industry. I was writing with John Bon Jovi's writer. I, you know, I was dating a, a famous country singer who's, who's now dead. Um, you know, I, 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 was, I wasn't spiritual at all. Um, in fact, I was the total opposite of what uh, people think is a, is a spiritual person. But, but, uh, but on my mother's side, my mother was a psychic. Hmm. My grandmother um, was, uh, my great-grandmother was a, um, a practiced shamanic stuff and was one of the first people to have an astrology column in the Telegraph in a major, major paper yeah. in this country. Um, and my great great uh, grandmother or the one before that um i can't remember all the grades my not, I, i'm not too good with numbers but she had a premonition that titanic was going to sink and got off and survived so all on my mother's side all these psychics and mediums and people going back in on the scottish side mm. and i've got all of my my mother's traits in me so so there i was working in the music industry you know with all the trappings of, of kind of um you know playing guitar and, and working with famous people and 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 doing things that people in the music industry do that are obviously not spiritual at all um and then i had this terrible accident i was i was i i can't say whose house it was even now um but there's a very very good in the usa you guys have the, those very famous um like christian songwriters mm -hmm. Whereas we don't really have the big Christian songwriters in the in, in the UK, but it's a big thing for you guys from where you are. But one one of the biggest um, Christian songwriters in the South, I was at his house, and I was standing in just socks. Um, well, I was, I was fully clothed, but I was standing uh, wearing socks, and I was reaching to, to to get a glass from the top of his um, shelf, and I slipped and fell, and the glass um, obliterated my face, and my lip was all torn up here and I had a hole here and I had a hole here and um and they, they luckily I had some some surgery and they sewed me up and everything and I was kind of like um out of my body for a couple of days uh but I was uh, when I was living and working in Nashville I was completely alone I all I only really had work friends and my family were all in the UK so they just sewed me up and basically just sent me back to my hotel room um, I mean, it was terrible looking back. It should never have happened. I should have had um, emergency care and God knows what, but I was just lying in my bed, practically going in and out of consciousness for days um, in terrible pain. Um, and I started, this is where, you know, I, I started seeing orbs in the room. I started seeing spirit. Um, I was having crazy dreams. I was like, all of my spirit guys were coming in all at once to kind of basically help me. So um, it was terrifying at the time because, I mean, imagine having a, a terrible head accident, you know, and, and I had to have CAT scans, half my face was hanging off and you're not, you're in another country, you're alone, no friend, no, no real friends, no family, nothing. And you're in a hotel room by yourself going in and out of consciousness. So, so my kind of, it, my entry into the spirit world was, was pretty um, violent, I would say. And then my, my dad got a call from, um, uh, from from uh, my my manager at the time, I said your son's in a bad way. You got to get over here. And he brought me back to the UK. I started recovering, and that's when I started having this kind of crazy. All this, um, I would say, like catch up, uh, like twenty five years of catch up. Suddenly started coming in in terms of psychic ability, like everything my mom used to do, my 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 great grandmother, so on and so forth. It all came in all in one go. And I thought I was going crazy. I thought I was actually going insane. Because a lot of people kind of build up to it, you know, from when they're a teenager or from when they're three years old. And I just got it all in once. Um, and that's really where it started. Um, so it was it was absolutely uh, mind boggling when it kicked in. And I, I remember um, I remember being in my uh, my my godmother's uh, basement. And I said, right, if you're there. It really, you know, I've had all these experiences. If you're there, just switch off the lights, switch it on again. And this happened. <laughs> and I said, right, do it again. Hmm. And I literally freaked out. And things like this were happening all the time. Hmm. So I, I, I went to my mother, who was um, um, very, very psychic. She, she claimed she was a, a white witch. 
Um, she did a lot of interesting spells and things around our family home when I was younger, and I thought it was all nonsense until this accident. Um, I remember she used to call me up when I was at college, and I hadn't spoken to her in three weeks, and she'd say, Alex, why are you doing that? And she would literally know what I was doing, exactly what I was doing, who I was. I mean, she was she was so connected. It was incredible. So um, things started calming down, started getting used to these abilities and these things coming in and kind of spirit and da da da. Um, started getting quite good at premonitions and seeing things. Um, and then I remember I was on, on the internet one one um, night, and I was looking for help because. I started getting very interested in the ETs when I was dreaming about the ETs a lot. So I thought, there's, so we, we've gone spiritual, but now we're going extraterrestrial. Um, it's, a, you know, it's a lot to handle um, in a very short space of time. So I found this absolutely incredible woman called um, Cynthia Crawford. Mm -hmm. Cynthia Crawford was um, an experiment uh, created in a test tube in an underground laboratory uh, by well, she, I, by the, the NSA, um, and she, they took um, Anunnaki and Zeta um, genetics and um, uh, put them together into into a human genome to create her. And she's the person that made this um, this guy behind me. And she said, she said, you know, you're a bit late. I said, what do you mean you're? I'm a bit late. Um, when I emailed her, she said, um. Well, I've been, uh, my guides have been telling me that there, there's this Arcturian captain or Arcturian commander is going to come um, this month and, and, and you're running late. <laughs> um, and I was like, I was like, wow. Um, have you seen Sword in the Stone, the, the one from the 50s? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know when the little kid goes to get the arrow and he falls through the roof mm -hmm. and Merlin is, is there? And he's talking to the owl. And he said, I predicted that you'd fall down through the roof right there and you're there. Well, this she was like that. She's like, she's like, I was expecting your email a month ago. You're, you're, you're running late. And this is someone I'd never met before, never spoken to before ever in my life. And what um, caused you to want to reach out to Cynthia? I was just um, looking for some mentorship or some help to try and piece together, you know, the craziness that was happening around me. Uh, and I found her and I was just drawn to her instantly. Um, and, and that's really how this whole thing kicked off and how I started getting used to channeling and talking to ETs and da da da, da and the whole thing. And, and later then the book and, and she was the turning point for me. She, you know, she said, you're not crazy. Um, and um, no, you've got this Arcturian influence and, uh, and all this kind of stuff. Um, um, I mean, I, I mean, do you want me to tell you about how the Octurians came in? Sure, absolutely. Um, so I'm aware I have so I'm... many questions. So yes, uh, be, feel free, because this is fascinating. I, I'll tell you how the Octurians came in, and then I'll, 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 and then I'll let you go for a, a, a few questions. Um, so, so basically, she said, look, you've got this Arcturian connection, um, and I need to make you a, a sculpt, a, a model, like what, this one, because what I do is I... I channel the the entity of the ET, and then I channel it into the model. And if I think you're like a, a, a you know a star seed or, or, or someone, I will make this model for you, and I channel the the entity of that being into the model, and then I will send it to you. So I've been waiting for this package to turn up for about a month. I was like every single day checking, did it come? Did it come? Did it come? And when I picked this thing up, I went into a trance. I literally went into a trance. I remember picking this thing up for the first time. Mm. And a voice in my head said, and a voice in my head said, go lie down. Ooh. So I went and laid down. And, um, and Cynthia has said to me, you know, get a picture of these guys. Put the picture underneath your pillow and then sleep on it because because that's how a connection is created so so this guy told me to go lie down and i lay down and i went unconscious within minutes and then i woke up and i was alone in the flat because i wasn't dating my partner then and i was running around the flat trying to say goodbye to someone 
And it felt like I'd had a huge party and there'd been like loads of people here and no one was here. And I was running around, I was like, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? And it's like my mind had been erased. And it was really confusing. Like, and I went to bed. And the next morning I woke up and there's this email from Cynthia saying, you need to have a past life regression straight away because I know what happened to you last night. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't spoken to her on the phone, she said, you, they, you went on board a craft, they wiped your mind, and then you went looking for them, didn't you? And I was like, <laughs> and that's when, the, that's when the first interaction with them happened. And how did you feel about it? Do, did you feel like you wanted more and that you were open? Did you feel freaked out? I remember going to work. I, I was in this job at the time that I really didn't enjoy because um, I, w- I wasn't in my highest timeline at that point. And I was just sitting at work going, oh, my God, this is, I can feel this connection here. And I was trying to focus on, I had a headset on, and I used to take calls in a call center. And I was trying to focus on my work, and I just couldn't. All I could think about was Arcturians and, and, mm-hmm. and these crazy dreams. And there was, I could feel this connection. Um, and eventually, as, as, as time went on at work, I just became more and more vacant and disconnected because this, this thing was coming in. And it was exciting. It was very, very exciting. Um, I felt very natural. And so how do you know them today? Is this family? Is this you in another dimension? What is the connection? Um, I have an Arcturian guide who is a singular being, not, not, not a collective. Sometimes they come through as a collective, but mostly it's an Arcturian guide. Um, it's about, um, five foot tall. It always comes in on my right. I don't know its name. Um, but I know it's, I know, I know how it feels. It's the same as my mantis being my, when I said to my mantis being, what's your name? It, it got out of drum in my third eye. It got out of drum kit. So I'm going like that. I give me rhythms. Mm. Then it flapped its wings very, very fast. Like it was like the frequency. And then it was going, it was going like click, 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 click. And I said to him, so your name is rhythms, frequencies, and clicks. Is that right? And it just nods like this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and, and I'm like, should I, should I not even try putting a name on it? And it just goes mm-hmm. like that. And my auction is the same. Um so it's 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 it, it, it my Arcturian is very has a very dry sense of humor and it's very sarcastic and it doesn't like me asking things twice um mm. and my my mantis has got a very playful sense of humor but they're two very very different beings and are they both guides they're both guides um my my Arcturian always comes in on my right my my mantis always comes in on my left and it, it took a lot of work um, to meet them, uh, bring them in, get to know them. Um, and, 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 and as a result of all that experimentation and working with them, I, that's what I now teach, how to meet your spirit guides, um, how, to, how to bring in your ETs, how to open up dialogue, communicate with them. After years of experimentation, getting things wrong, um, getting things right, um, uh, and so on and so forth. How do you facilitate that? What does that look like? Is that in a group situation? Is it private? And and how do you work with people so that you can literally allow them, I assume that they experience it on their own, or do you make that introduction? This is who it is. This is what they look like. I'm connecting the energies. Um, I do group sessions. I do group classes. Um, I do one-on-ones. Uh, one-on-ones are... Um, a little bit more exciting um, because we can sometimes get a li- little bit more out of it. But there's so many people who are coming to me who want to have the experience and learn how to do it. I I have to do classes just to fit yeah. all the people that want to come knocking on the door. But one-on-ones are much more fun because the way I facilitate it is um, I, I train people that, for example, you don't want to come in after a long day of work sat in an office and start channeling because your energy is going to be all messed up. So you need to be aware of what's going on with your masculine and your feminine and your chakras and your energy and your blockages and your, your, your field. And I teach prep work first. 
Um, often what I'll do is um, uh, first timers, um, if I can call them that, or, or you know, um, meet your uh, your guide noobs will come to me and they'll say, I want to meet my guides. And okay, so and I'll say, okay, we're just going to drop you in the deep end because th there's no easy way to do this. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll take them out of their mind hmm. and into their heart space because the mind will analyze and shut down and distract and distort all the information and, and the integration and the encounters that's coming in from the ETs. That's why, you know, so many people around the world never reach their potential and never live their dreams because their logical brain is constantly shutting down their intuition and telling them it's wrong when their heart is saying otherwise. If you look at great entrepreneurs or Mozart, Beethoven, you know, but these people that are always working from the heart, that's where the highest timeline is. So the first thing I do is I teach to, to shut the mind down and get out of the mind. And I have ways and constructs I, that I do that. The next thing is I'll tap into the client's energy. I'll see what all their alignments are. I'll go through all of their chakras, what's open, what's closed. Then I'll go through all the masculine, the feminine energies, and I'll see what, what where it's um, out of whack and how to balance it. Um, I'll teach them how to, how to get their, their energy in, in tune. Then I take them into a construct. Sometimes my auction will come in. Sometimes I have a little um, three foot tall angelic being that's gold. That's called Karen. I don't even ask me why it's called Karen. It just is. Um, I thought that was a joke um, when they told me that this it's like, a, you know, like, a, you know what a middleman is or a switchboard operator. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a, a three foot tall being that's like my switchboard operator that um, facilitates things. And it's called Karen. And sometimes she will come in. And then I will be standing behind the client as we go into this construct. And then I will give them certain cues and things we go through and then beings start coming in mm. and I'm kind of holding their hand as they're going into it. And uh, usually a lot of experiences unfold. Sometimes it's with um, ancestors. Sometimes it's with the ETs. Um, hmm. I'll give you two examples. Today, I had a lady who was actually very advanced. So we, we got in very, very quickly. She, she's a medium, but she doesn't work with the ETs. So um, it's it's fun to have someone advance because we can we can play a little bit more. So we we went straight in. We did all the work um, tuning our energy. Went straight in, and straight away she had an, she had a um, an angelic being. She had a, a reptilian being on her left, and then we met a, a, a council of nine that came in that were wow. from um, from a galaxy outside of here, and we found out where their location was. Mm -hmm. um and they were giving her various things to think about but sometimes i will have loved ones coming through and for example two weeks ago i had a lady who that her dead mother came through and she goes oh my god my mother's showing me my watch that i lost 10 years ago now she's showing me this box and now she's showing me the attic and now she's showing me upstairs and now she's showing me what box it's in and anyway after the session i had an email from the client to say that she after the session we'd had she went up to the attic. She went to the box that her mother had shown her that we'd seen, and she found the watch that she'd lost for 10 years. That was kind. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I, a lot of lot of very, very crazy things happen during mm -hmm. our sessions, and I never know what's going to happen. Sometimes it'll be deceased people. Sometimes it'll be ET. Sometimes it's a mixture and, and, and a whole lot of things. So that is what, what I'm what I specialize in really is is the ascension stuff, but connecting with your guides, working with your guides. Like for example, th this is a, a Zen tarot book. Mm -hmm. This is how I learned to you like read like in the early days, how to like do tarot and stuff like that. Right. So a lot of people in in, in the spiritual community will read a book to gain information. But what you don't need books anymore. You don't, you don't need it, it, all the stuff when you can connect your guide, go straight to your guide and get it from them. That's cool. I love it. I love it. And that's, I love what I, that's, what I, that's what I teach now, to, to go straight to source, straight to your guides and get it from them. Yeah. I mean, energy is everything anyway. <clears throat> and the time we're living in is like this and we're moving into something even greater. So that makes complete sense to me. And it's lovely that there's someone like you offering a service like that for people who are really ready for that next step and that level of communication. And um, I, I want to talk to you a little, also a little bit about multiverses and galaxies and universes, solar systems. We all know that all of this exists concurrently. 
and various stars. So we're not alone. We know this. There are many beings, there are many entities, there are energies that exceed our limited six senses. So who is with us right now at a time where I feel like we really need them to be with us? Who are the energies that are around us just beyond our six senses, maybe beyond our vision and our comprehension, but are actually here facilitating whether we know or don't know? Well, we have our ancestors. Uh, we we have uh, the angelics. We have our ETs. We have the ascended masters. Um, we have loved ones as well. We also have facilitators that will come in and out of our lives, uh, people who would just help us. Um, but more interestingly, we have something called innate, which is uh, the quantum part of ourself that is working within uh, alongside the quantum field or the soup that is everything that that encompasses everything and everyone. Um, um, you know, when people say we are all one, mm -hmm. well, to some degree, we are all one. So we have all of those energies, but we also have innate and our innate is a part of our quantum self that works with the the field that is around us and also our body in order to facilitate things physically, but also to draw and manifest and make communication and so on and so forth with the switchboard of the universe. So there's a lot of energies coming in. There's also, uh, we have councils and, and, and some people talk about the Galactic Federation. Right. I don't work with the Galactic Federation. I, I, I just tend to work directly with beings as opposed to groups of beings. Um, and every now and again, I'll, I, increasingly, I, I'm, I'm actually getting a lot of, um, 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 I don't want to say dead people, but increasingly, as my ability goes up, I, I'm getting um, a, a lot of ETs, but a lot of... Um, Incarnates? Like, like people who passed over, you know, like um, like a, maybe your grandmother or something like that, because the, because the, 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 the veil is going down and mm. down and down and down. And once you have some of these abilities that have clicked on and you know how to do it. it it's so easy in these energies i mean honestly do you know what frustrates me about the spiritual community oh no what is the spiritual community make channeling and make mediumship and make psychic ability so difficult and complex and it's not it's easy hmm. you, i can teach it to anyone and i do mediumship skills how to talk to your parents who passed on how to bring in your ets how to channel yes there are some disciplines that you need to ad adhere to but it's never been easier to do this work hmm. and uh, and I'm, I'm bringing um people who have never done this stuff before uh you know up to speed very very quickly is that because and their innate abilities are increasing quickly as the ascension is happening uh, that's partly, yeah. Um, it, it's also partly because I've been I've been practicing teaching certain ways of being able to do it for years and years and years. And I've managed to boil it down to a few ways to get in very quick and very fast in a very simple way. Um, taking little bits from here, little bits from there, bits from my Arcturian, bits, bits from my Mantis being... And increasingly, I, 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 I put the books down and I just go straight to them now. Uh, I, I'll give you one example before we go to your next question. For example, I was, um, uh, there, was there was a friend of mine that I was doing a reading for, and my, my mantis being comes in. And the mantis being is fumigating the, the living room. And I said, my mantis being is, is fumigating your, your, your room. Um, it's like there's something wrong with the air in your room. And they said, um, well, that makes perfect sense because I've been having breathing problems recently and we just found mold um, growing in the ceiling. And I said, okay, now I know why my, my mantis is showing with this. So, um, you know, as the, as the veil goes down and down and down and down, I, I know it's great to go to Glastonbury. I'm going to Glastonbury tomorrow and... Um, and we go to the pyramids and we have these pilgrimages and things, but really you can tap into these energies and just have a pilgrimage, you know, doing a 10 second commute from your bedroom to the kitchen table and still have all these energies because the veil is so low now 
that we don't have to go to Mount Shasta or all these okay. places to connect to energy. We can just do it in our living room. And, well, and since the, you're and, saying this, I it begs me to ask you, I know you won't teach us a whole class right now, that's your class, but can you give us a tip or two how we can start to embody that, how we can welcome that into our lives, that level of either psychic ability or connection with guides and those that are here to assist us? Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let's start with some basics. Um, this is what happens all the time. Okay, there is the mind. And there is the heart. Yeah, first we need to di diagnose energy. What is energy? Yeah. Our, our eyes deceive us. Our six senses often deceive us in a lower dimensional um, energy. The spirit world is the unseen world. It's the world outside of our six senses, often facilitated by the seeing in our third eye, our, our intuitive knowing, or our feelings. Some people are more feelers, some people are more seers. I'm I'm seventy percent seeing and then thirty percent feeling. Some people more feeling. Um, actually, everybody has the capability to have all of it. If you think about the flower of life, what is the flower of life? It is a special geometric shape that has a three hundred and sixty degree dimension to it. That a lot of people, um, not that I recommend you take DMT or ayahuasca or anything like that, because I always I always teach that you don't need that. And I get people to have all these experiences without any drugs at all. And, and I think I, I was watching your interview with, with, with your last guest that, you know, the, the fabulous woman who channels the, the Pleiadians. Oh, Nora Harold. She's amazing. Yes. And she was saying, you know, the, the, I don't know whether it was her. I think it was her. She was saying the problem is, you know, when, when we start taking mushrooms and ayahuasca, and, you know, it's a permission slip to to bring in, a, you know, um, you know, a, a, a addiction, but also... Um, you know, we don't it need was, yes, it was Nora. And she was basically saying, you give yourself a permission slip to have that level of experience when in fact, you don't need to drink the ayahuasca or take mushrooms. You can actually just have that experience and beyond that experience. It wasn't about addiction. It was about just what you're saying, that these abilities are, they're inside all of us latent or not. Mm. And, we, and also, I think she was also saying, you know, we don't need the reliance mm -hmm. of something external. It's all in here already. So let's diagnose your question, right? Yeah. The, 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 the very first thing that is very, very important in reaching out or understanding the, the, uh, the spirit world or the unseen world is about understanding how to accept information from the spirit world or the unseen world. So, so for example, I, I'll give you an example, right? Our mind always gets in the way. It's our mind that always shuts us down because the ego wants to know everything and it wants to control everything and the ego has expectation. So but when I take a client into a construct and I say, we're going to do this thing, I always say, observational neutrality if you saw your ex in, in 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 what we're about to do if you saw your ex who's passed away you have to view him and accept him from your heart not from your mind and not from the the, the filters of the synapse of your brain which are often more than not come from a lower density perspective especially if you're born pre-2012 you have to forget everything you know so to become a conduit, you have to become total, totally neutral and you have to forget everything and you have to be able to go into total surrender to the information or whatever it is you're seeing that's coming through. And I'll give you an example of this. I was doing a reading for a lady the other day. And suddenly we've got Steve coming in. Okay, are you are you a family? Yes. Are you last generation? No. Are you generation before? Yes. Okay. So your name is Steve, and you're this woman's grandfather. Okay, I've got your grandfather here, Steve. He he's passed away. Does that make sense? Yes, he was my grandfather. That did pass away three three years ago. Okay, great. Let me just see what he's got to say because sometimes a spirit comes in unexpectedly during a session, and I actually give that I give them permission before I go into a session because it, I find it fun. And sometimes the client will find it fun as well. Um, so Steve comes in and I'm sat here. 
and I'm I'm getting this imagery and the message is coming in because I, I'm, I'm into my surrender and I'm surrendering into what's coming in because I'm a conduit. I have stopped processing and I've stopped analyzing and I've cut the brain off and I've come out of my mind completely. And I'm doing nothing but surrendering and observing in total observational neutrality and nothing else. Yeah. Like water passing through a pipe. There's no um, restriction at all. Yeah. And I'm seeing an oven uh, exploding and then I'm seeing the kitchen setting on fire. And then, and then he's telling me, don't worry about the cooking. And I'm thinking to myself, so I'm an ET guy. And this woman's coming to me for an Octurian message or whatever. And I'm, and, and I'm just observing. I'm just observing. And I said, I said, um, I said to, I said to Steve, the grandfather, are you sure this is right? And the, and the grandfather's going, yeah. And I said to the client, um, okay, so your grandfather wants me to tell you not to worry about the oven because um, the kitchen's like kind of in a mess or something and you'll be fine. Don't worry about the cooking. Now, 100% of the time, if you're not used to channeling messages or stuff, the brain, the analytical brain, the ego would say, that's nonsense, you're making it up, it's not real. And the client burst out laughing and she said, well, you're never going to believe this, but 48 hours ago, my kitchen blew up, the kitchen set on fire and I can't cook anymore. So that's amazing you said that because that's exactly what happened. I said, I oh, know, I've got your grandfather here, he's telling me this. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because you must surrender into the information that is coming in without the brain telling you or overanalyzing that this is wrong or it's fake or it's not real because it's always the mind that shuts us down. It's always the mind that shuts us down. Plus, as a channel, as a conduit, you have no context. So you can't even analyze the information. Is this right? Is this wrong? This sounds crazy. It doesn't matter. You, there's no context to you share it with the client and then it's a different ball game, right? It's in their life, their sphere, and they know what this means. Yeah, so it's just absolutely. yours to share. And this is why I get very frustrated with these spiritual um, groups on Facebook because there's so much distortion in all these Facebook groups and there's so many of them out there. Uh, and, and this being is evil or this being is evil or the Galactic Federation is evil or whatever or blah, 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 blah. And I always say, go channel that being first and see for yourself. Because I'm telling you that when I go off into the woods and I do a 45 minute meditation and I go into a void where I can't even hear the birds and the trees and I'm out of my body completely. And my mantis being comes in for the first time. You go beyond the mind constructs of good and bad and good and evil and light and dark. So I'm telling you, in those much higher densities, there isn't all these all those things that the mind creates. Yes, there are there are some you know some parasitic entities and things out there you know in the lower densities. Uh, there are reptilians and stuff, but when you go up to those very 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 high planes, there's no good and bad. There's no these are all mind constructs. So I always say, uh, you, you've got to come back into your heart, stay in your observational neutrality, be a conduit and, and be nothing but a pair of eyes viewing without the synapse of your brain and all these things you've heard in a Facebook group, Ashtar Command is evil, you know. It, it, you, you, when you get to these higher planes, it, all that stuff doesn't exist. It's not there. Mm. And if you have all these filters blocking you all the time you're going to have a lot of very distorted information coming through and you won't be able to do all this kind of work so that's the very first thing i teach get is to get your mind out of the way so you yeah. can get the information to come in without you distorting it down to something that is basically junk by the time it gets there does that make sense completely 100 percent. yeah so that's the very first thing i teach the, the next thing I teach is let's go through your chakras. What's open? What's closed? Mm -hmm. And I'll scan. I'll scan the client. I can. I can scan you right now if you <clears> wanted <throat> me to have a look. Um, I probably pro probably a little probably uh, putting you on the spot in front of your your your. Oh, it's your, okay. Your... But I also know because I do chakra work as well, and I also know that it changes, right? It does. But you can scan me right now. Oh. You know, tomorrow if we did it again, it would be different. But please. It, it would be, it would be. And that's a very, very good thing that you brought up. And it's very, very important that you brought up, you brought up that thing because every single morning I have to scan myself 
yes before i do any work with any clients because the uh, it's very 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 important thing you said because a lot of people are still in an energetic imprint mindset perceptual perceptual vibratory awareness still of an old energy but everything was stuck mm. And things are very, very fluid now. So every single morning, just like you said, I have to check my own energy to see what's going on, what's changed. Because Me things too. are so fluid. Just, just like you said, just like you said. So it's very, very important to, to be doing that. So we'll go through all the chakras, we'll check what's open. I do it every single morning to see what's going on, see if I've got attachments myself. Mm. Because if you're not aware of your own personal energy, if you, um, you know, a lot of times, the quantum field will bring someone to you as a mirror image to either show something about yourself within the quantum field because of something you put out that is now rippling back to you or to get you to experience density through the vibrational field in their quantum field to come up and outside of you for healing that they are orchestrating inadvertently through their higher self. But if the ego once again is in there, it's going to say, no, that person was evil. That person was wrong. I interfaced with their energy. And something felt icky about them. But 50% of the time, it's something within their field is bringing density up from you. And it's coming up and it's coming out. But the egoic mind will tell you that it's something that is, is wrong about them. Because we are, again, we're not coming from the heart space. And if you're not in the heart space, you can't process energy because the mind will always give you distortion. Would you like me to give you an example of that so it makes sense? Absolutely. Yes, please. I couldn't work with sex sexual abuse victims in the early days because I thought something was wrong with their energy. Mm. Until a very, very gifted mantis uh, being, who uh, a woman who works with mantis beings, I, I was telling her and she said, let me get my mantis being in to see what this is all about because it doesn't sound right to me. And the mantis being um, scanned my... Um, my sacral in the last couple of lifetimes I had, and I was, I had had sexual abuse going back that I was ancestral. That was um, an issue in my sacral now. So every time a sexual abuse victim came in, mm. they were bringing up density in my sacral that was coming up, but I should have been taking ownership of it, but I was in my mind and I, I was projecting it back onto them when it was my problem and not theirs. Does that make sense? Yeah. Huge. Wow. And were you able to work with that energy to release it and heal it? Yeah. So I went up to the tour, which is the heart chakra of earth where I'm going tomorrow. We, I went up there with her and we did some work and we got it sorted out and I've been fine ever since. Mm -hmm. And that was a big learning. That was a big learning curve for me. Yeah. It taught me that if I'm interfacing with someone else's energies and I, I feel, and I start feeling wrong, I will always go to myself first to see where my energy is wrong instead of project onto them. So cool. So cool. Thank you for those tips. I think it's really helpful. I can imagine a lot more in your class that you learn and help people with. I think that's intriguing. And I understand that Pachamama, that Mother Earth and humanity is considered to be this big science experiment with many extraterrestrials having eyes on us. So why? Why are we being watched? Why are we considered so important? I mean, I'm saying that I already get information. So I know some of it, but I really want to know in your world, why are we so important? And why is Pachamama so important to the rest of the beings and galaxies? <laughs> you call her Pachamama, yeah? Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, why is it so important? Because Earth is one of the only free will places, experiments in the universe. So free will can go any way you want it to go. And it has. It certainly has. And you can manifest it any way you want it to go. And evil has done that. Mm -hmm. And it has used the quantum field to manifest it in an old energy that was possible in a new energy. You can't do it so much anymore for a lot of different reasons, but yeah. it was, Earth is an experiment. 
a lot of souls are rushing down here to be part of the experiment and and to see what this free will ex ex experiment is like hmm. and to see whether I mean, we did cross the hurdle in 2012 but it's really to see what we can do with our individuality not only uh, as a collective consciousness but 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 also before 2012 uh, as a as a singular person because we always say me and i and then as we go up into the high densities and five and above it, it, it becomes we but still with a sense of I. And then as we start to get some nine and above, we get, you know, 9D played in consciousnesses and um, 9D Arcturian councils. And usually it's just we and nothing else. And the sense of I goes completely. So they're looking at our earth and figuring out, can these guys do it by themselves? Can they work through all their karmic issues? Can they work through all their trauma? Where will free will take them? Will they blow their planet up like the Pleiadians did? 200 now uh, 233 563,000 years ago or was it or will they or will they get through it and we did get through it and if we didn't pass the mark at the sixth time this place was basically, basically going to be restarted mm -hmm. so now we're ahead of time and we're racing ahead and 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 they're basically trying to see, you know, we're the new kids on the block. And they're seeing, you know, how fast can these guys do it, and how they how how are they going to do it? It's 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 as interesting for them as it is for us. You know, people think that they have all the answers. You know, yes, they did have a much higher perceptual awareness, and time goes much faster on the other side. But they're still looking at us and thinking, wow, how are these guys going to do it? Because don't forget, we were them, and they have been us. Right, right. On the other side, there is no time on the other side. So. Mm. You know, people think that the Arcturians are some kind of really um, superior, incredible being that we must look up to. But they see us in neutrality as their brothers and sisters, because as I say, we've been them and they've been us. Oh, We're just down here with our boots on the ground at this moment in time. Right. You know, this this role reversal. So so all eyes are on us, not only to see how quick we're going to do it, but to see how fast the encoding is going to happen. And there's other civilizations that are going to happen. And then eventually, you know, we're going to get in our ships and then we're going to go to the atmospheres of other planets and they will look at, up at us and say, that's ETs, but that's us. I love that. So, 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 so we are, so we're the new kids on the block. So all eyes are on us, but also we're the new you know, boy band. We're the new earth boy band and girl band. It kind <laughs> the new of. Kids on the I block. Mean, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so as, but, 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 you know, as we work through all of our um, SHIT, we're healing ancestral lines, not just for ourselves, but for, for stuff that is happening out in the cosmos and the ETs as well. And all of them are going up an octave as well. They think it's just us, but the whole galaxy, the whole, well, certainly our galaxy, but the whole universe is going up an octave. Everything is going up an octave because We've got all these codes that are happening uh, in the great central sun. And, and that, that's not just flooding and just, it's not just like, oh, like it's just suddenly not hitting all the other star systems and everything else, all these great central sun and everything um, that's happening. And it's just only just hitting this tiny little speck. It's hitting everything. Everything is going up an octave. Mm. So um, I want to most... reference something you did. I watched one of your YouTube videos about Arcturian guidance and specifically Arcturian guidance that you received. And I had this really big takeaway. It was quite beautiful um, because you actually read, I guess you received this whole download and then you wrote it out as though it was a letter and you read that letter. And at the end of the letter from Arcturian guidance was this quote that we are veiled because if we knew how powerful we were, we would wonder, why on earth are we here on earth if we even knew how powerful we are? And I thought that was a stellar thing to reflect on at a time when I understand there's so many beings and energies that are in a waiting list who would do anything to come in, but we have chosen to come in. And some of us are battling a lot of that, like, oh, this is a really hard life. And yet the Octarian is telling you, we're so much more powerful than we even know. And that sometimes we veil ourselves from even recognizing the potency of who we be because we question our sanity. 
Like, if you're so smart and powerful, why would you choose to incarnate on Earth? But yet here you are. So with that brilliant anecdote that you received, is there also a lesson forward to using our power, embodying our power, and recognizing we did choose to be here and using it for good for ourselves, for the planet? Mm. Again, another great, another great thing you said. Um, a, a lot of star seeds have a problem being here, especially the ones that have um, the old souls find it easier. Um, but the ones, you know, when I when I check into clients and I, I and I'm like, um, you've only been here five times, so how do you feel about being here? And fifty percent of them are okay, but the other fifty percent have a real hard time grounding down. And they have real root problems. Um, mm. And sometimes that turns into suicidal um, thoughts early on, um, eating disorders, things like that. Um, and they struggle to be here. And it takes them a long time for them to be in their body. And when you're not in your body, you're very, dissoci very dissociated. Uh, you don't feel like you're here. And often these Starseeds and workers are coming into families to uh, clear up a, um, a lot of... Um, karmic stuff as well so that it's like twofold it's like a lot for them to deal with it you know the first waves that came in you know a lot of a lot of them checked out it's much easier it's much easier for the second wave and the third wave and it gets easier and easier and easier and easier now but now we've got these these kids who are coming in who are so multi-dimensional it's hard for them to to ground it down in here and we're getting a little bit more autism coming through and adhd and all this kind of stuff and these kids are very, very, very gifted. But you know, this is a um, you know, imagine me and you, imagine me and you swimming down below a hundred meters, but below the the point where most humans can't. You know, only free di free diving champions hmm. can go, where oxygen is, is very, very low, and your cognitive cognitive ability starts to get a little bit weird. You know, you you can't really ground down where you are or, or what you're doing. And you're right on the edge. And that's what it's like for some of these very high, high vibrational kids to coming in. It's almost like going down like to where a free diver goes with just a little bit of oxygen and trying to make sense of the whole thing and ground down. And you can see the light up there, but, 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 but it's tough, and especially when you come, come in with a block root chakra. And a lot of these kids, a lot of these high vibrational, high vibrational kids are coming in through C-sections more and more because it's harder for the mother to actually give birth. Uh, so C-sections for these kids are going up and up and up and up. So um, you know, I actually forgot what your question was. Yeah, wow, that got so cool, that tangent, I have to say. I was right there with you on the C-sections and everything. But And also, I just want to add a piece. What makes it hard also for people, and I actually uh, resonate with this, is uh, besides coming in and you're sort of a newbie here, but when you come in, indigo and extremely sensitive and i am extremely sensitive it can be very 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 hard to be a part of this planet's humanity so that said the question was if the octarian's guidance to you was <clears throat> we're actually incredibly powerful beings but we veil ourselves because if we realize how powerful we were we'd say why on earth are we here on earth why do we make that choice and so i'm asking you is there a way to actually take that lesson and utilize our potency instead of veiling our potency how can we use our potency to be the most extraordinary beings use this lifetime to be everything it could be and more to be the greatest creators manifestors contributors to humanity mm. that's the question well i mean we 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 mentally veil ourselves because we have because um you know, our, our minds are, as we come from a 3D to a 4D paradigm, uh, you know, we've been, we, we don't get taught the stuff in school. And uh, we have a lot of subjective information coming at us constantly through the news and, and, and our artificial sugars and, uh, uh, you know, and pharmaceutical drugs. And, and we have got that and everything else. And so there's a lot of things just in our physicality that is blocking us. Um, and our food, and you know, generally our our, our food is is our food um, um, strains, our food um, distribution is, is 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 quite polluted. So, so we're already at a slight disadvantage because we don't have the types of fruits and things that Guy used to grow 
initially, and uh, but there, there has been a veil to some degree you know, up until 2012. It's electromagnetic if you want to get scientific. The veil is electromagnetic frequency, uh, partly to do with mixed with gravity fields and quantum fields as well, and encoding inside of us. And that's what the veil is. It's part of the it's gravity mixed with the electromagnetics of Earth and encoding, partly to do with the heliosphere of the sun and various other things going on, which is the veil, which is also um, something to do with the angelic realm. The angelic realm um, are part of um, uh, holding some of that stuff together so that our reality doesn't completely collapse because it would all go insane otherwise. But as that goes down, yes, we are we are coming here, we're coming to learn, but also this is a school of mastery. It's also a school of fast tracking. So a lot of souls will come here to fast track through many, many, many lifetimes. Um, and there's also lots of souls who are like um, special forces. They go to lots of different planets and they've done this multiple times. They'll go to lots of planets and help them ascend. And then they'll, they'll stay there, inherit the planet, They'll get to a certain stage and some will stay and then some will go. And then they'll, yeah, I, 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 when I, in the early days, when, um, when I was talking to Cynthia Howard, she said, you're one of these people. You, you go all over, you go and help the send planets, then you go somewhere else. And every now and again, I, I come across these people because I often, one of the first people, um, one of the first things people say is, so, so who's my star family? So I'll go into the star family and often I can tell who, who these people are because they'll have such a diverse um, star heritage and they have a bit here and a bit there and, da, 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 and a bit da, 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 as opposed to groupings which is what most people have uh, these are the people that are, are constantly going around and sending places and, and it's really really important to you know just just to say while we're on this topic that a lot of people will will want the egoic linear mind to say well i'm i'm andromedan or i am this and a lot of people say well Alexander Quinn, you're you're Arcturian, right and i will say well, actually, the truth is I've got pre-universal origins, which are um, dragon energy. Mm. Then I came as in as a feline Lyran being. Mm. Uh, I've actually got Regulus Lyran being in there. Um, I do have, um, I was a reptilian being for a short while. Um, my female, some of my female galactic traits are Andromedan. My masculine traits are actually Arcturian. Um, and there's some, and every now and again, there's some angelic traits in there. And actually, Every now and again, I'll get all of them come through. So I am no one thing. But it, it just so happens that the first one that is coming through strongest in this lifetime is the Arcturian, because that's part of what I'm here to do at this moment in time. And, and, and they're also here working with the Earth. And then later, the Mantis being came in. But actually, none of us are just one thing. We are many things, but there are certain aspects that will come through dependent on what's around us, who we're trying to help and who we're working with and all sorts, all, all sorts of stuff. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Yeah, it does completely. And um, I've had a galactic reading from somebody absolutely superb. So I even know the inception of my soul and then the planets and entities, beings that I have been. And it makes so much sense. That's what I love about this work is that it's not separate identities that one would say, well, gee, that is so weird. I would do that in that lifetime. It actually is a complete contribution to who you chose to be this time so uh, everything from how i look to the work i do to how i act to some of my talents it makes so much sense so yes i get it i want to talk to you a little bit about the schumann resonance because i know you like that a lot too and i know <laughs> that the earth behaves like this gigantic electric circuit right and it's um, electric electro magnetic field surrounds, it protects all living things with this natural frequency, this pulsation of 783 hertz on average. And that is what is called the Schumann resonance, which is named after a physicist, Dr. Schumann. So on a deep level, if earth has a heartbeat, 7.83, Hertz. What does the Schumann resonance do? How does it act on our behalf? 
Great questions. Loving your questions tonight. Really, really great questions. I, I, I'll come on your show more often if that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I just have so um, many more questions for you. Yes. Oh, well, your questions are really, really good. I mean, stunning, stunning, really, really stunning. Um, have you seen the film Contact with Jodie Fo- with Jodie Foster? Oh, a hundred percent. Yes, it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. What happens in the first sixty seconds of that film? Do you remember? Yeah, so in the first 60 seconds, she's out working with those, um, I, for want of a scientific word, there were some kind of satellite dishes, right? In the very, very beginning of the movie? Even, even before that, the very first 60 seconds. This is an old movie. You're really trying my brain. Um, no, you'll have to tell me. Okay, if, if you go back and watch it, what happens is when you, when you hit, um, I'm going to sound old school now, when, when you put the DVD in and press play, uh, they'll probably they'll, they'll they'll probably be like people you know people who are like teenagers going oh my god DVDs play you know, um, but when that movie starts, it starts um, where you're looking at Earth, and it starts coming out of Earth, and and you hear the Spice Girls playing, and then it moves away from Earth and you get to Mars and then you hear um, and then you get to Jupiter and then you hear the Beatles playing. And then as it as it gets to Saturn, you, you hear um, the Olympic Games in 1946. So I've probably got the year wrong. And then you hear Hitler talking. And then as you go um, to, to Pluto, you hear some of the first broadcasted waves that ever came from planet Earth. And we are constantly broadcasting all this stuff and we're putting it out there. By the way, the ETs are picking it up. The ETs are listening to our, watching our TV shows and listening to our music because we're putting all this stuff out and it's going out into our solar system. Um, but but the, the important thing about what you're talking about is, is, is the Schumann resonance is the ionosphere, as we stand here looking 30 miles up, is charged particles with, with positive and negative ions and protons. Um, and that's where all these radio waves and electromagnetic um, fields bounce around within our atmosphere, within the ionosphere. Some are going out into space, um, and um, and the uh, the uh, the Andromedans. Um, you know, I love Lucy, that old TV show with Lucy, uh, Lucille Oval. L- yes, Lucy, of Lucy course. Ball. Yeah, I could sing the theme song, but yes, I do. Um, I remember I was watching this um, uh, this Andromedan channel and, and, and the Andromedans were coming through and they said, you know, you're putting all this stuff out into space and we've enjoyed watching I Love Lucy. <laughs> That's hilarious, really. So so the ionosphere is where all the stuff, it, it makes radio waves possible. This, ele- this electro- electromagnetic kind of soup circling our, huh. our, our, our Earth. So in 2016, 7.83, which you see on on those graphs that look like this, it's green in the bottom, and then it goes blue, then it goes white out. So so 7.83 is the green bit at the bottom. It's our natural frequency. It's the calling card of Earth. Um, As you start to get blue, you start to get those higher frequencies coming in, and all the white stuff is the gamma. So our bodies, um, the synapse of your brain works on um, uh, electrochemistry, electro, um, electro, uh, electronic. Um, so you've got two synapses at, at the smallest level, and one's pointing at another one, and, and there's a little elect- electric field that goes chemi- uh, through chemistry. So our body is like. A, um, I don't want to say a battery because I don't want to get too much in like like Matrix style and everything. And I love the Matrix. It wasn't a movie; it was a documentary. But um, but 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 we are basically we, you know our body's electro uh, circuitry. So if our body is electro circuitry, and the and the ionosphere is changing, and we are in the ionosphere, and we are uh, uh, electrical, we are bioelectricity running through us, especially with the brain running on synapses. And then in 2016, we go from 7.83 and it goes boop and it goes up to 30 and then it went up to 90 and then it went up to 140. And now we're just off the scale all the time. What's going to happen is we are in 
uh, as as one of my guests, uh, Linda Good McGill and Linda Good McGillis says, we are in consciousness, but we are also in the electromagnetic field of field of the world. So if it, if the if the if if that field is changing and we and we are in the field, and the synapse of our and our DNA is running on uh, electro um, on electrochemical impulses, we're going to start changing on a chemical level, and we're going to start changing on a strand level and a, on a DNA level. So more strands are going to become available. And as a sweeping generalization, the more strands you have available, the more densities roughly you can go up, up, up into. But more quantum parts of your DNA are becoming available. So the, the Palladians help um, put a quantum part into our DNA. So we have 23 chromosomes, but the 24th part is quantum, and eventually science will catch up with that. So what happens as your DNA starts coming, you know, that 98% junk, supposedly, you start getting the Claire abilities kicking in, you know, so for example, um, um, Claire audience. Now people think, oh, well, I'm not a spiritual person, you know, I don't have, um, I don't have a spiritual ability. You know, I'm busy eating McDonald's and, and watching Netflix and stuff and whatever, right? Well, there's a lot of people who have um, clairaudience all the time because clairaudience is the ability to hear what is supposedly inaudible. Mm -hmm. What's the ringing in the ears? Mm -hmm. As you go up into these higher frequencies, you're hearing, you're getting that ringing in the ears as we're going up and up and up because it's coming in as a frequency and then it's hitting um, something within the, within the ear tract. I don't know the exact science. I wrote about it in my book, but... So you are you are essentially hearing what is inaudible, and you are having a clairaudient experience. So more of our DNA is going to click on. Um, there is also this theory about Enki's gift, which Barbara Marciniak talks about, which is some latent coding that the Anunnaki put in um, to help us get there, which is also partly to do with inf infighting, um, you know, from the Anunnaki and so on and so forth. But that might just be another bedtime story. But I love the Barbara Marciniak stuff. So your DNA is going to click on and you're going to start getting more psychic and more abilities kicking in. And then, uh, you know, a, a lot of people becoming more hermits that, you know, they're getting divorces, they're going up. Um, and mo loads more people are, are leaving old relationships, changing jobs, totally changing, uh, you know, uh, becoming new people. Because as, a, as the world changes, you know, our consciousness is a our consciousness projects the world that we live in. Mm. And as our consciousness changes, the world that our consciousness will project into the world out there. The world will change and banking and food and distribution and markets and, and, and things will become more local and the way we eat and drive and so on and so forth. So it's all changing. That's why, you know, as our consciousness changes and our DNA changes, all the systems and, and, and these quantum things all have to change as well because the world is a projection of our consciousness. So it, 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 it has to change because it's inextricably linked as is our shadow self. That's why I keep on going on about shadow work because you you know, Peter Pan can't run away from his shadow because it's linked to him all the time. Yeah. So, you know, why, why do all the spiritual bypassing and love and light stuff, which is great. It's a lot of fun, but you do the shadow work. You know, we came here for the healing. That's why we're down here to yeah. work through all, all the stuff. It's some of the most powerful work I've ever done in my life. Uh, game changer, completely to take ownership of one's whole self as much as one can perceive it in any moment. And just for people who are not aware of what that means, can you explain what a shadow self is? So do you remember the example I was giving earlier on about how I will always, if, if I interface with someone's energy and something feels wrong, instead of me, my, mm. my, my ego. Right automatically because we're, we're trained in fight and flight right the monkey mind the reptilian mind or freeze survival you know we automatically because we're not in control of our ego mm. so the ego takes control and then we go into projection right and in 12-step programs they say one finger pointing at you means there's three fingers pointing back at me so it's really my issue yeah i mean and most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. So, so for example, you know, w w I'm doing shadow work all the time. But so when I'm interfacing with someone, something supposedly comes up inside me that I think, oh, this doesn't feel great, or 
something's not right here. I, 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 I go into, again, I become a conduit. I go into my observational neutrality. I shut the mind down. I step back from the mind mm-hmm. instead of allowing And, and just so people know, to... like blow by blow. So something is happening that creates a separation with somebody and, or there's a judgment or a criticism or something is perceived, right? That doesn't feel good about that mm-hmm. person. Yeah, or it could even be um, something that I'm picking up um, just um, energetically. But the mind always comes in, Mm. fight, flight, fight back. Mm. And the shadow work is to step back, view, don't analyze, view, just watch the experience and see where it lands, and then you can analyze and see what happens, and you step back. But... Always try to take ownership of of it from your own perspective first, then project. And that's just one shadow. That's, you know, that's just one basic shadow, shadow lesson. Right. Yeah. I learned um, in my work with it, um, always to write down the things that that the worst things that were in history, my history or going on currently. And everything I blamed that person for, judged that person for, put a label on them about to then turn that around and say, where am I like that? And of course, the first thing, because the ego does get involved, is like, there's no way. I'm nothing like that, Mm -hmm. right? And then I learned my little trick. Don't look for something, their behavior equals my behavior. Look for the energy of what we're talking about. And so- woof, you go down that rabbit hole, I would find creations and ways of being. Yeah, a lot of remorse. I can say that I had a lot of remorse when I would look at myself and say, I actually see the inception of this. I see how it plays out. I see how it destroys relationships and trust. Um, And I would feel so awful. I would always write um, a letter or make a phone call and follow up and create an amends. It was important to me to clean it up. And then I could never be the same after that. It had been, you know, the light had been shown on that darkness and it's powerful. And it doesn't mean I don't still have shadow, right? As much work as I've done on it, because it's, I think it's part of the human experience, how we project on others. You want to go deep? Sure. It's my middle name. So we're doing a lot of a a, a Akashic clear up right now. Mm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you an amazing example of this because there are complexities to this. So some people are having a Akashic inheritance and a Akashic inheritance bias. So a lot of people will get into abusive relationships because they've done it lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And then they get in this lifetime and they don't know anything different. So they are naturally drawn to these people because they're just in routine. And then they will say, oh, my God, but these people are so abusive. Blah, 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 blah. And actually what these people are is something that they are playing a role that has been decided by you on the other side prior to you getting here. For these guys to come into your life so that you can see the scenario again and break the cycle and stop it. Hmm. You don't have to keep doing it in the lifetime. And that's why there are so many people who, and especially prior to 2012, had to go through the same stake over and over and over and over and over and over and again. And all those Akashic and, and karmic cycles are now coming to an end for so many, many people because of, of we're coming into a higher dimensional, um, multi-dimensional part of ourselves. So we're breaking these loops and we're making the lesson. We're, we're learning the lessons now. And we're not going back into an abusive relationship, but, you know, uh, again, and blaming them and saying, hey, actually, that person is, is, is an abusive person, but it's my fault I got involved. It's all about taking ownership. And that's the hardest thing for the ego mind to process that we are creators and we create our own reality. And if our reality sucks, it's our fault. <laughs> now, now that's very, very hard for the ego mind to process, but there is a Akashic things at play that do make it a little bit more difficult. Yes. We have come from a low density. It does make it more difficult. Yes. 
we are coming to our power, you know, we, we're not in our full power. Yes, there are things that are stacked up against us, but we have to take ownership for ourselves and our own energy and everything. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to say something I've probably never said publicly before, but, you know, if, if my energy is not in the right place and, and I'm having a really bad energy day, I, every now and again, I will, I, will, I will cancel a client. I will say, look, this is not fair on you because... I can't give you what I should be giving you. And I, I need to go away and, and, and do a whole lot of energy work for the afternoon so I can get myself ready for you because I check myself out. Myself is not good enough today. And if they want their money back, I will give it back to them. So I'm brutal with myself every single day. Every every morning I, I, have, a, I have a routine. I do a 20 minute thing and I check myself. And if I'm not up to scratch, I'll say to the client, I can't, I can't service you today because I can't be who I want to be. I think now that's that, very refreshing. I have to say that's that is a lot all, of that's integrity. That's mastery comes in. Yeah. That's beautiful. I mean, if I was your client, I would just reschedule. <laughs> I'd be in love with you because I know when you show up, you're fully there, all your gifts intact and none of your stuff getting in the way of our session. And, you know, we'd feel it anyway, right? The session would be off. So that's very refreshing. Well, that's called that's called taking ownership of your of your energy. That takes practice, and that's taken me a lot of practice. So I'm going to ask you, as we get towards the end, I know you do light language. I know you do channeling. I am actually in a light language group. That's a it was a big leap for me to agree to do that, but um, I'm actually loving it. I really love it. Everybody takes, we pull cards. Everybody takes a chance to do light language. Everybody's incredibly different. And as you know, the delivery and what every person mm -hmm. experiences from the delivery is yeah. so different, but it's a really profound experience mm -hmm. and experiment. So would you be willing, Alexander, to do some light language channeling or transmissions for us here? Uh, yeah, they're already coming in through now. Um, they want to address uh, one of your previous lifetimes when you were lying being called a Sha'ita. I just wrote it down because it's coming through right now. And, uh, and they're going to address that and they're going to speak to your galactic self now, okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, let me just bring my, um, let me just bring him in. He always comes in from the right hand side. Okay. But Shaka the Ishan Tata Varia, Shaka the In the Imbaba, Kata Ishan Doriana, Kata Endaradam Uria, Kata Ishan Dariada Baba Kata, and the Ufu Hurian Nare Shatara Shaka Tari Shanta Doriada Baba Katam Uriari Yashatara Biara. gone um i was laughing because they were addressing um your part of your lyran side and they were saying um don't you remember the beautiful um gold kingdom of lyra you were there when we used to come and visit you um and we'd like you to try and um address that part of yourself because it's going to come through in the work in, that you're doing at this moment in time and we'd like you to explore that. Um, and they give this name uh, Sharita or something along those lines. So um, the, I was laughing because it was very, very personal as it came in, personal for you. And um, and they were quite playful um, when they come through. So um, I did it. I did a, I did a book launch recently and um at the end i i brought the octurians in and, and they they kind of did a, a a message you know for the galactic brothers and sisters and it was very very emotional i almost started crying because they were so they come in with a love beyond our imagination and the gratitude they had for um all of us being in that room at that moment in time and doing that work when I was talking to all those people and we were doing 
a workshop, the gratitude that came in, all I was trying so hard not to cry. And oh, I feel emotional just talking about it now. Imagine someone saved your life. Or someone gave you a kidney or something like that. And you were going to die. And you have this overwhelming sense of gratitude that comes in that is beyond anything you can imagine. Sometimes when they come in, that's what it feels like. And it's so deeply emotional. And, and you can't experience that here. You have to experience that down here. So, so sometimes they're very playful, like when they came in now and they want to talk to you directly. But sometimes they just want to come in and say, oh, God, we're so so thankful that this is happening at this time because it's needed for you but it's needed for us as well because we feel you know we we, we you know that only being 32 light years away that they, they are the next door neighbor you know the syrians feel our breath it's like we're breathing on them that's how close you know they're only 40 whatever light years away i, I can't remember but it's like we're breathing on them. You know, what we're doing here is affecting everything going on in the galaxy. So there's a lot of entanglement and the law of one and all these things. So sometimes they'll come through very personally and sometimes it's a, it's, it's a different thing. But I was laughing just so much then because it was very personal and they were very playful um, coming through at an aspect of your of yourself from a very long time ago. And that's why I was laughing because they're in a very playful mood tonight. So... So forgive me for, for laughing. I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at them. I felt the energy, actually, of what you were saying. I didn't feel laughed at. It felt so joyous, what you were saying. And thank you. That's a beautiful gift you just gave me. I am highly aware I've been Liren. I'm actually in a band. I sing, and we're called Lions of Lyra. No. Yes. It's Are you? Yes. I'm literally, I'm literally getting tingles. I'm literally getting tingles. Oh my God. Is your and band also called the Lions of, of the. It's the, true. Look it up on YouTube. You can hear me singing Lions of L Y R A. Look, oh my, I mean, my whole life, people have said, you look like a lion. My rising sign is Leo. And, um, and the funny, the wild thing, and I'm, so, oh I'm going to listen back to this. The curious thing about this beautiful palace you were talking about, you know, yeah. so in this lifetime, I never wear silver. I never wear silver. Everything, oh. I, I'm i like a gold freak. Everything has to be gold. And I don't know, I even once had like fairy, um, I don't know what they're called, but these little tinsel fairy yeah, things you can put in your hair. And the woman who did it, and I, and she had this spectrum of colors. I'm like, gold, only gold. So there is, that's a saw, very interesting connection that you would even say yeah. a palace of gold. I swear down, I swear to God, um, I did not know you were in a band called whatever, blah, blah, blah. But, but, but you know, this is why I don't have a nine to five. Well, well, actually, I work longer hours than a nine to five doing this because I run my own business. But this is why I don't go and sit in an office and, 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 and do whatever. And, and, I, and I, I, I went through a lot of struggle a financial struggle as well in the in the early days to 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 train myself to 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 be able to do this because because the payoff is just so damn good when you get moments like that and I get I get about one moment like that every day and I'm and I and one of my mentors is in Glastonbury she's seventy six and and I often call her. And I will say, oh, my God, you're never going to what happened today. The Octurians came through and they told me this thing and the client, you know, confirmed it or whatever. And it's just it just keeps me wanting more and more and more, you know. It's magical. Magic is real. Magic exists. Have you heard that song? That Coldplay song when it goes at the end and he's singing, of course I do. Yes, I do. You know, that that magic song. Mm. Anyway. And what you do is magic. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for bringing that. Oh, and Alexander, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and visions for yourself, for the planet, anything? Um, I well, well, initially, I would love to um, 
start up. Do you, do you know what one of my ultimate dreams is? I've never said this publicly before, but it's a big dream. It's really, really big. Um, I went to, I didn't go to university because I'm very dyslexic. I'm bad with numbers and bad with spelling. And um, thank God I finally found what I'm good at. But and all my teachers said, you know, it's probably best if you don't go to university because you're going to struggle. And, you know, they, they were right. They were right. So I went to I went to the Academy of Contemporary Music in Guildford, and it was this um, really cool uh, one of the lead, or Europe's leading music academies. And they did rock guitar and music production, the DJing and bass and guitar, and I, and I did music production and, and and guitar and stuff. And they did a, a diploma level, higher diploma level, and then did a degree. And you know what I've always thought that would be so cool is if eventually, what, what, you know, when I get the funding and, and when the timing is right, to create a the spiritual or galactic version of the Academy of Contemporary Music, Europe's leading school for dim, it would be, like, it would be like the galactic Hogwarts. Oh God, that sounds amazing. So you could you could get a degree in channeling, mm. or you could get a degree you could get a higher diploma in divination or astrology, and there would be a department for each one of these things. Um, and you'd have all the top people in Europe that would all uh, be full time teachers in this school, and you could do you could do divination and astrology with a side of channeling, or you could do full time channeling with a side of um, crystal work. Um, you know, and, and you'd get you get a bit of homework and then, um, you know, each day or, you know, just on the weekend um, and you'd have classes and you'd, you'd all be in it together and you'd, you'd have other you know fellow peers. And then after the end of each class, you know, you'd all go off and practice channeling together and 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 and, and, and all these star seeds from all over the world would fly in to do it. And they wouldn't be lonely anymore because. They'd have each other and they'd be learning with each other and they'd have the students and it would just be a place of magic. It would be it would be the, the galactic cosmic version of, of Harry Potter Hogwarts. And, and that is what I think that's one of my ultimate dreams is to create that, get the top people in. I would help manage it because I love managing people. Um, yeah, that's my Leo because um, I'm Leo as well. I manage it and, and get and and and. and and get, you know, all, you know, we, we don't learn this stuff in school. We need to get these kids learning this stuff. So that, I think that's my ultimate dream. That's what I would love to do. And, and just what, and just, just watch kids just going off out into the world and, 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 and then they become the teachers and they go and start schools. And that would just give me a major thrill. Bravo. I love that dream. I see that for you and for us. And where can people find you? I know on YouTube, they can find you under your name, Alexander Quinn, Q-U-I-N-N. <clears throat> Any place else people can track you down? Yeah, absolutely. So my London address is, um, only joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, YouTube, Telegram, um, you know, my email's um, under all my videos. If you want to send me an email um, for a session, it's a bit hard to get hold of me. Um, no, you can't get to me till nearly August now. Um, that's how that's how booked up I am. But I'm I'm trying to do more group classes so I can get people in for stuff. Um, but yeah, just, just find me on YouTube or um, if you know where I live, um, don't knock on the door. I won't answer. Thank you so much for coming on. This has been really deep and joyous. I'm so grateful. Yeah, it's been fun. And, and your questions are fabulous. I mean, really, really top notch. So, so it makes my life really, really easy. So thank you. And, uh, and your show is amazing. And it's evident by the guests that you have on. So I think the, the, the superstar is you. So thank you. Hmm. I end today's show with this quote. You are a beloved of the universe. You are as beautiful as the sunrise and as ancient as the stars. You are a spark of divine love in human form. Through you, goodness and light flow into this world. So thank you. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the weekly Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger podcast. Next week's show will be featuring the amazing Jamie Price, who's an intuitive empath has had off-world memories of being Illyrian and Syrian starseed and began to receive and transmit messages from cosmic beings. 
Jamie is the author of Opening to Light Language and the Cosmic Consciousness Ascension deck. It's an oracle deck. She's an international channel, international teacher, and energy healer. It's an honor to have her here next week. If you love this show, please subscribe, like, comment. I do read them all. And remember, you're a starseed. Clean up your shadow. You'll be so much happier, right? You'll be in so much more ownership. And also, you are so powerful. You are so, so powerful. Shift into the resonance you came here to be. Thanks for joining us today on the show.